the sum means you're adding difference and subtract. Product, of course, is multiply, and quotient means division. And that's at the top of your page on page 42. Okay, so given these three functions, guys, we're just going to do some basic math on these. So we have f of x is x squared minus 2x, g of x equals 3x minus 4, and negative 2x squared plus 1. And what we're going to do with all three of those is we're going to add first. So when you guys see this, of course, that means add. We're going to add the two functions together and just combine like terms. Sometimes you'll have x there, which means we're going to leave it in terms of x. Just combine like terms and leave it. Sometimes we'll have to evaluate with a binomial in here or even perhaps a number. So we're just going to be adding f and g. So it's just the composition of adding both of these together. So remember, f is x squared minus 2x. And I'm going to write plus. And guys, I'm going to put g of x in parentheses. But whenever you add, the parentheses don't really mean too much. So now we're just going to combine like terms. So, of course, we have two linear terms. So our final simplified answer is going to be x squared plus x minus 4. And that's as far as we're going to take it, guys. Remember, now we're going to subtract uh, h from f. So remember, f is x squared minus 2x minus, and I'm still going to drop in parentheses to show that I'm substituting in h. And remember, h is negative 2x squared plus 1. So guys, remember, when you subtract, you're really combining the opposite. So we totally have to distribute and combine like terms. So this is going to be x squared minus 2x, and remember when you distribute your negative, this turns into a positive 2x squared, <clears throat> and then remember that's going to be a minus 1 at the end. So when you guys combine like terms, you're going to have 2x squared plus another positive x squared, so it's going to be 3x squared that's leading this, and then minus 2x, and then of course minus 1. And guys, we're just practicing uh, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. So there's no um, simplifying, there's no solving, and certainly do not try to factor unless the instructions say to. And we're just going to leave it in terms of x just like it told us to do. Any questions on B? Let's go ahead and take a look at problem C. So for problem C, we're going to multiply them together. This time we're only multiplying f and g. So remember, f was x squared minus 2x, and we're going to take that expression and we're going to multiply it by g, and g was 3x minus 4. So guys, you're just going to FOIL and combine like terms here. So when you multiply the first two terms together, remember that's going to be 3x to the third power. And then, of course, x squared times a negative 4 is negative 4x squared. Now we're going to work on the two inside terms. So a negative 2x times a positive 3, I'm sorry, negative 2x times a positive 3x is negative 6x squared. And then your last two terms, guys, a negative times a negative is a positive. Don't forget to write plus 8x. And then, of course, we're going to combine like terms, and the only thing we can really combine are the two inside terms. So our simplified expression is 3x to the third minus 10x squared plus 8x. Now, I know there's a lot of stuff that we could probably factor out of that, but remember, we're just evaluating, just simplifying, so we're going to leave our answer like that. We are going to have h divided by f, so I'm just going to draw a fraction bar. I'm going to put my h on top here negative 2x squared plus 1, and then remember your f is x squared minus 2x. And this is when you factor, because things might cancel out. So remember, if you have a uh, fraction, then you have to check to see if things can cancel out. So, if you guys notice, I cannot take anything out of the top. I could take out a leading negative, but I cannot take out an x. So, I'm going to rewrite the top. How 
However, on the bottom, we can take an x out. Sometimes things will simplify, but they are not going to simplify here. Also, we are going to have, for the first time, a restricted domain on your compositions, guys. Remember, when you have a fraction, whenever you have a fraction, you have x on the bottom, you've got some limits here. So we know x cannot equal 0, because that would make the whole thing 0. We also know x cannot equal a positive 2, because that would make the whole denominator 0. So remember, you must restrict domain when appropriate. And it is certainly appropriate in Part D. So remember, these are what they cannot be. We have two things that we need to exclude, which means we're going to have three pieces for our domain. So your domain is going to be negative infinity all the way up to zero. We're going to go right past zero to the number two. Oops. And then we're going to go ahead and wrap up our domain right after the number two, and it could be all the way to positive infinity. So remember... If you have variables in the denominator, you always have to restrict the domain. Do you guys have any questions?